Scope of K topics. My co pilots on this kamikaze caper are the keen eyed Sandy Toxig. <laughs> <laughs> the kick ass Lisa Tarbuck. <laughs> the knee high Susan Kalman. <laughs> and the knave, very voluble Alan Davis. <laughs> And the buzzers today are kaleidoscopically colourful. Sandy goes. Yellow is the colour of the true love's hair. Lisa goes. Green is the colour of the sparkling corn. Susan goes. Blue is the colour of the sky. <laughs> and Alan goes. It's like an old people's home, isn't it? Enjoy me. You have your cocoa in a minute. Yes. It's only for an hour. Enjoy it. Old people's home is like a Nazi rally. <laughs> well, That's how they used to warm up. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 uh, well, now we better get on with our an erste Frage, our first question, which is about your kin, your kin and kindred. Do you know what your relatives smell like? My grandmother used to smell of lily of the valley. Nobody smells of lily of the valley. That was anymore, very common. It was very popular, wasn't it? Grandmothers don't smell the same at all now, do they? They used to smell faintly of mints. Um, <laughs> and Amontillado sherry. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Just yeah. the one. Yeah. Just, um, just the one, dear. Yeah. <laughs> Baileys. That's what my grandmother smelled of. <laughs> Baileys. Round the inside of the glass with a finger. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> my, my granny used to, there used to be a preference called Tramp. Really? Yes, there was. Tramp and uh, the advert for Tramp is uh, a young lady who... She knows what she wants, and that's to be called a tramp, <laughs> in the 1970s, and she wanders through a market, and all these guys are like, hey, and she's like, I'm a tramp. I'm a tramp. But, you know, it, was a, it was a nightclub, a famous yes, nightclub in, yes. in German Street. Tramp or Still Charlie. Like Charlie. Charlie. I can, remember, I can remember Benny Hill doing a monologue about going to one of those King's Road. It was a den of inequality. And it was, <laughs> uh, he said it was full of kinky boots and underwear, and he said I could smell her Charlie across the room. <laughs> It was a perfume. That's so wrong. His men used to smell of old spice, didn't they? The dad yep. smelled of old mm. spice and wave, rolling oh, waves. Brute. Brute, yes. yep. uh, Paul uh, Abbott once wrote a line in something I did for him, which said, as our, as our characters went into my parents' house, the last line was, don't say anything about the smell. <gasps> which was really fascinating, because it really suddenly 3 d Makes you think of it. Absolutely. Exactly. And yeah. I thought it was a, a, just that, that line of genius a, that he's very good that at. That is very, very mm. good, isn't it? Very good. Well, in fact... I know the smell yeah. of my children anywhere. My yeah. own children. That's the interesting point. It seems that a lot of members of the Animal Kingdom I do, was, for very good reasons. I was sat on quite a lot. By, <laughs> so you'd think it, it would ring a bell. <laughs> by my older what? brother, in order to incapacitate me right. <laughs> during disputes. It's very beautifully put. And there's a certain aroma that I think I... <laughs> Powerful the old factory memory can be. Well, it is the most powerful. If it returned, if he sat on me today, you'd know. <laughs> Rome back to 1973. Well, it, it does seem you're absolutely right. And can you think of an evolutionary or ecological reason why you uh, might need to but know to, what? Well, it's I just you would not want to mate with your cousin. You wouldn't for want example. to shag your so own you'd close relatives. So you'd want to know what your relatives yes. smell like, so that you. So this sounds like all shagging takes place in the dark, but... Um... Yeah. Well, you wouldn't... I mean, for example, most mammals don't raise their young the way we do, with long, long bonding, so you recognise your mother and say, I must not shag my mother. But in other mammals, they might not see their father, for example. The mouse lemur, which is one of the cutest little things in Madagascar, mouse lemur, is reared exclusively by its mother, but it can recognise its father's smell and avoid shagging him. Mm. So and butterflies have incredibly keen senses of smell, can smell mates from a huge distance away. But if they're inbred, they have fewer sex pheromones, it seems. Don't they say that as well, when you're getting together with somebody, that part of the reason that you, you get on well is that you enjoy each other's smells? It seems so. And can keep you together? Men who have, I don't know about women, but it seems to have been researched, that men have no sense of smell who are... Do you remember the word? Wordsworth was this. Has no sense of smell? No. A, a nosmic. Oh, right. A nosmic. You can't taste any food or anything. Oh, so you then, wouldn't be able to taste food either. But men who have no sense of smell get less... Sex. Fewer, fewer, fewer sexual partners, yes. Oh. I thought you were going to say takeaways. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. Just have toast again. <laughs> 
um, Dr. Johnson, um, somebody once said to him, you, you smell. And he said, no, I do not. I stink. There <laughs> <laughs> well, you are. Um, nature has its reasons for producing smelly rellies. Uh, suggest <laughs> some ways of blackmailing your parents. Oh, yes. Oh, well, um, emotional blackmail, I would have thought at any time. My, my mm. children can blackmail me at any time by threatening to join a, a team sport. <laughs> <laughs> I can do anything they want, anything, as long as I don't have to go and watch them perform in some sporting event. Really? Oh, can't be doing this. Well, you're right. I mean, that is the well-known way that children blackmail their parents, by pester power, and uh, if you don't, I'll never speak to you again, <laughs> and such things. But in the animal kingdom, can that exist? Can, do you know of any... What, some kind of emotional blackmail? Yeah. There's a particular species of bird, pied babbler, whose young actually leave the nest and threaten to throw themselves off until their parents come back and feed them and push them back in the nest and feed them more and feed them more. Suicidal birds! Yes, well, kind of <laughs> pretending they say. Feed me or I'll okay. jump. Yeah. I can't fly. Darling, darling, maybe it's more sophisticated. sophisticated. It is sophisticated. But, but why don't the adults remember that that's what they were doing? <laughs> that's the problem with being adult. You never remember what Oh, he's gone over the edge. He was bluffing, he was bluffing. <laughs> I used to do that when I was young. I'm not falling for yeah, it. Yeah, go on Oops. then. But you don't remember what you did when you were a baby. That's true, you don't. Uh, there's another thing. You notice the beaks. Have you ever seen a very particular kind of beak that is in young birds? A koa bird has the most remarkable beak, which basically represents a face. Oh, my God. <laughs> but weirdly, not even a bird face. It looks more like a human face. Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> but that is basically saying, put the food here. Wow. <laughs> it's like those things they had for men to aim at in the urinal, isn't it? Yes, exactly. <laughs> it looks like Alan Carr. <laughs> I'm half closing my eyes now. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> You're right. It does well, look a bit That's remarkable, isn't it? It is extraordinary. Really? So there's a little man in there, and he wants some food as well. <laughs> oh, a whole intestinal Eat tract. All of us. <laughs> yeah. And then as he gets older, it fades. Just extraordinary. That's brilliant. Mm. What are we looking at here? A bird. Uh, more birds. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, it's this one is where it a the cuckoo? cuckoo's yeah. gone yeah. in the nest. What do, we, yeah, what do most hard. cuckoos do? Uh, they throw the eggs out of the nest uh, of another species. Oddly enough, that's not most. Oh, is yeah. it 37? It's, yes, it's 50 odd of a species, which are 136. Okay, so only about 50 babies, odd do it, the other 80 it's, don't. It's enough to cause talk. Yes. It is, but a minority, <laughs> a minority <laughs> cuckoo species are yeah. cuckoos in the nest. You're it? giving the rest of them a bad name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those nice cuckoos have got to do so much work to make up it's... the reputation. <laughs> so birds blackmail their parents, just like people do. Uh, why did the spider go to the bathroom? Ooh. They don't. Come up the plug hole, they Correct. fall in. Correctly correcting them. Mm. Fall in and they can't get out. Okay, fall, fall well, that lands. makes sense. But why do they go there? Are they thirsty? Well, they're house spiders. So they live in a house. In a house? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've got the hang of this show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's that, I still feel there's a trick coming. <laughs> there. They're usually hidden nicely in the wainscoting. Yeah. They can last a long time without food, but one thing they can't do without is a drink. <laughs> <laughs> no, just put your own considerations on. <laughs> <laughs> Are they voyeurs? Do they like watching people in the car? <laughs> You'll always find me in the bar. Here they well, come. Well, that's oh. why they're called the spider. Oh. They spider. Oh. I spider. Yeah. As I say, they, they can do without food and they can do without drink, but they can't do without washing. <laughs> oh. Exercise. Exercise. Well, this yeah, kind of it. Sex. The male. Oh. It's the male spider. Come autumn. Has yeah. got to get his rocks off. Really? Oh. And this is where they lose their inhibitions, and that's when you'll see them in bathrooms and so on. And basically, they don't really stand out most. In carpets, you might miss them, but in bathrooms, against the white, and unmistakable. But what and happens if they, they don't fall have into sex? the bath? Well, uh, they, they, they just... <laughs> <laughs> It's a primary imperative amongst a lot of animals. They have an eight finger <laughs> shuffle. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, when I see these spiders running around my, at my house in the autumn, yeah. they're just really horny. Yes. They're males looking for a female. That, uh, that makes it worse. And, and, uh, <laughs> but it's worth thinking about. I, I become round spiders, I think, oh, they're because they're, they're, they eat about 2,000 bugs Insects, yeah. a year. Mm. And that's 2,000 less of those in your house. Yeah. And just one spider. Completely. Totally friendly. Or oh, two, really, because they've got to have sex. Yes, they have sex. I pulled a curtain once and I was still in bed. And you know the yeah. absolute dread thing of seeing that above you? And oh. for the length to, for it to drop, I was up over my boyfriend and at the end of the room <laughs> before it dropped on there. That's it was impressive. The quickest Shrieking. I've ever moved in my life. Oh. That would be a very good Olympic sport, spider drop. <laughs> <laughs> the height of the spider and the distance you're going to travel, some calculation, <laughs> degree of difficulty. Yes. <laughs> That's a garden spider web, yeah. isn't it? A, a, it's one of them but in them. houses you get cobwebs. In other words, mm. sort of messy, asymmetrical. Which in film, film companies have spray cobwebs, mm. which is the most glorious thing. I'm sure you sell it in, in, in your yeah. house. You think, That's this magical stuff. You could presumably buy it online, but it's so great for Halloween parties. I recommend it. Did you just say Jonathan Ross? Sorry, I meant Graham Creek. I like the idea of Alan having had a brief career as Jonathan Ross. 
<laughs> Maybe it's like Doctor Who. Everyone gets a shot at being Jonathan yes. Ross. <laughs> you were the sixth <laughs> Jonathan Ross, weren't you? <laughs> I've been long enough I remember your transformation. To regenerate. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so. Spiders, I think, can't see very well. So I think you would be, have been as much a surprise to the spider. Yeah. yeah. As, do you know what I mean? I, think yeah. they, I don't think they drop, drop on you on... They don't see oh, no, you think, that's true. I'll have a go. <laughs> <laughs> He's a tarper! He's a tarper! <laughs> I'm going to get an autograph! <laughs> He's got to be shy. I used to like you. <laughs> I used to be... Lisa! <laughs> that was <laughs> brilliant. It was like Jonathan Ross was in the room. Yeah. Uh, what Mrs Spider, uh, after mating the house spider, what will she do? Eat it. Yes, she will, the most famous being the redback. Red uh, yeah. Or the black widow, yeah. indeed. The redback is perhaps... The male is the really most willing for it. He will inseminate the female and then jump into her open mouth. How <laughs> That's the last thing he does. He feels so high. <laughs> well, the, 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 the good old British house spider, she has the decency to wait for the male to die before eating him. Mm. So it's, a, it's just kinder. She must feel weird if she has sons, because she knows how they're going to go. It must be yes, it's true. You look at the boy and think, oh, shame. Did she, want, <laughs> did she want either the insemination or the spider dinner? She might not have wanted either of them. Well, that's true. Like, oh, God. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> I'm just eat me, eat me. But <laughs> well, I suppose it kills two birds with one stone because sometimes if you have had a little bit of the sexy, sexy time, you are hungry. That's and right. it's sometimes annoying to have to get up and make a pass the dinner. <laughs> and so what it is, is you've just, you've just had a bit of a... Uh -huh. I expect and, in the future men will evolve you know. with the Domino's logo on them. Yeah. <laughs> So women will lie there going, at last, that was actually OK. Come on, come on. And, uh, and then everyone's happy. Yeah. So, if there's a spider stuck in your kitchen sink, he's probably on the pool. The best way to help a spider is by giving him a little ladder. But what's the point of snakes and ladders? Ah, now, I did a programme about this. Uh, um, and because, actually, it originated in India. It did. And it was a morality game, as so many of our games oh, were, yes, yeah. or are. Instructional, not, yeah. yeah. But wasn't it linked as well with Ludo? Well, you have snakes and ladders on one side of the board oh, and Ludo on the other. Yes, you could, yeah. that's right, it's basically. It's as easy as that, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so they are in many ways linked. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> but this, as you say, do you know what the message is, as it were? For the States, it was called shoots and ladders. Really? And if you'd sort of eaten all your dinner, you were allowed to go up a ladder. And it was if you'd done something bad, like, I don't know, become president and not close down Guantanamo or something. <laughs> it was, um, <laughs> then you went back down the chute, so it was the same. So I suspect it's to do with... Well, that's right, it's learning various lessons. The, the K, no. in this case, is karma. Uh, so okay. it's a first or second century <clears throat> Hindu game. And the snakes represent different types of sin. The ladders let you reach nirvana, which is the finish there. You can see the original game isn't quite the same in structure, but it's not that far oh. off. That's how it looked. And if you hit a snake, it represents a vice for which you're punished. So evil deed squares include disobedience, which moved you from square 41 to square 4. <laughs> Drunkenness, 62 to 21. Murder, <laughs> mm. 73, all the way back to, to number 1. I, I should think so. Late. Desire, yeah. almost there, 99, all the way back to 29. Um, and the virtues, which were the ladders that took you up, included faith, perseverance, compassion... Arsenal supporter. <laughs> I'm afraid, Alan, knowledge. Um, and, and I'm even more afraid, self-denial. Uh, <laughs> so it's a really a proper agent. A genuine agent, yes, second century, uh, yeah. And one that has sort of survived, I, I think it has. Among, do you young people in the audience play snakes and ladders? No. <laughs> Don't you have an evening? No. That one didn't sound very young. No. By the way. No. <laughs> Do you have a snakes and ladders app? No. <laughs> well, while we're in playful mood, I have one of my knickknacks to show you. Ooh. Yes. Now this, the great Lord Kelvin in the 1890s was wandering along a beach with a friend called Hugh Blackburn, who was a mathematician. They found a pebble in the surface on which to spin it, and they found it had a peculiar property, not unlike this, which is called a tippy top. Um, and you give it a spin. Ooh. Oh. oh. It turns upside down. Now, what you sort of don't notice is, is it's still going Ooh. clockwise, but it's upside down, so it has reversed the direction of spin. Oh. Oh. And engineers and mathematicians like Bohr and, and Pauli were fascinated by this, and it is, it is quite fun. We can show you some VT of it being done properly, and you can see slightly better spin there. Um, it keeps its... So this is about, you and know, where they were spin, saying... It's still going that... Sorry. Where, where they were saying that the Earth axis is going to change and that North's going to be South. It's much like this. Sorry, Lisa, is the world going to turn upside down? Apparently so. <laughs> See? Tuesday. It's happening on Tuesday. <laughs> it's just like I need to get up to date with my bills or not. This is perhaps more impressive. This little thing here. And what's strange about this is that I can spin it one way but not the other. If I spin it anti-clockwise, it goes very happily anti-clockwise. But if I try and spin it clockwise, it not only will resist, it will stop and spin anti-clockwise. So I'm now going it? to try and spin it clockwise. Because of the shape, the You'll particular see, well, shape. Well, obviously, is the reason, yes. Yeah. Messing with it, you're twisting its metal. It goes around again. Yeah. So, and then round and round and round again. Do you 
Yeah, physics. So try that. It's extraordinary. So try, do it, it is. Try it really anti-clockwise. Is. Why? First anti-clockwise. I know, it is very mysterious. I'm sorry, but I didn't what is dismiss the, no, no, it by saying, well, because guess, of the shape. I'm trying it, to ascertain what the shape is. I couldn't it, really see what is the pretty, shape of it. It's, it's not, a cat's tongue, Alice. So there it is. <laughs> it is a cat's tongue. So there you are. That shows it goes nicely counterclockwise. Let me see. Yeah, it's oh. almost it's a sort of a humpy thing. Slight hump in it, but it's nothing. But it's got a twisty bit. Tiny twist. Now do it clockwise. Did Isn't you, that amazing? Did you say it has a name? This particular thing is called a rattleback. That's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. So that's the tippy top and the rattleback. Oh. Two very extraordinary objects that you can spin around and seem to have minds of their own. Now, name the world's scariest spice. Mm. <laughs> well, it's none of them. No. Because I was a member of the Spice Girls fan club at the oh. age of 20. Oh, oh. No. <laughs> they were amazing. They were amazing. They're a lot of flat now, but they were amazing. Oh, nope. Zigazig are. Just uh, happened to be in the Spice World, the movie. Uh, oh, yeah. I went to see what? that in the cinema. Which one are you playing? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly literally did it um, because I had nephews who were at the age where to get the signed photograph of each one of the yeah. spies. It was like ten Christmases mm. for them at once. I would have, pre- I would have so pretended thrilled. to be one of your nephews <laughs> to get... But that's why you spoke everyone was on that film and they basically said, I tend to get an autograph. Yeah, so yeah. Well, what was the question? <laughs> oh, yes, which is with the scariest spice of them all. So we're looking for an actual spice? Uh, yes. So it's one of these? Yes. Um, in order to big up the price of spice, and you didn't need much to do it back in the 17th century, spice was the most precious commodity in the world. Indeed, there were spice wars between... Well, the British, the Dutch, and the Portuguese mainly. Mm, absolutely right. And the and the island of Banda, yes, in Indonesia, was swapped for Manhattan. No, well, one of the Banda Islands was yes, because it had so much nutmeg on it, and nutmeg was more valuable than gold. Indeed. And they used it to preserve meat. Well, they, they, they do, the and at the time they thought it was also a cure for the bubonic plague, which increased right. its value even more. The island was actually called Run, which is one of the Banda Islands. But, um, Have you the, been to a spice considered... farm? It's the most astonishing thing. Because you say, oh, go to a spice farm, you think, well, there'll be the nutmeg here and there'll be the paprika here. And it all grows all together mm. in the most fantastic ecosystem and you, you walk around and they're, they're intertwined. It's the most heady experience I've ever had in my life. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, the spice farms in, in places like uh, Tanzania. Tanzania and Sri Lanka. Yeah. And yeah. So that's, that's nutmeg. Love that. Um, yeah. And nutmeg is related to mace in which way? What way? How way? Well, I don't, know, I don't think I know it's a bit mason, my beef stroganoff, but not nutmeg. Does that help? <laughs> the mason and nutmeg are the same plant. They're mm. just different parts oh, of the same plant. Oh, OK. I didn't know that. Yeah. But the one we're talking about is cinnamon. And the salesman of cinnamon, in order to sell it at the most premium price they could, used to tell of where it came from, which was the nest of this extraordinary bird, which they called the Kinemanion union. And it used these twigs of cinnamon in its nest. And what they would have to do to catch it, this giant bird, is they'd leave slaughtered bits of giant oxen. And the birds would take them up and put them on their nest, which would overbalance the nest. And it would fall down and they would take out the cinnamon twigs. And so they would charge all the more money for how dangerous it was, basically, to gather from this mystical bird. That is so fantastic, because you can imagine on the Silk Road or the yeah. trade roads stopping and earning your supper of a night by telling the tale exactly. about this particular thing. In fact, it is a bark from mm. tree. This doesn't take that much skill, but to travel the distance it did, once it got to Britain, it went a long, long way. Oh, away. yeah. I mean, the very, very richest of people could afford it. But, well, just stay on spice for a moment. Okay. I've mm. prepared some more spice for Ooh. you and put them all into pots. And I want you to tell me which spices you can smell in there. Which different spices. <laughs> I've got one for myself. <laughs> it goes everywhere, that'd be funny. Oh. Wow. What can okay. you smell? Cloves. Cloves, 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 definitely. Cloves, definitely. It's not me, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. Oh, yeah, it was me. Anything else? You definitely said cloves, definitely. I said Yeah, you said yes. Very strong. It is strong. Perfume, it actually smells like a grandparent. I wish I could make the audience smell it. One day there will be smell vision and we just share. So I got something to catch if I throw it. It's very strong. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can pass it on. You can pass it along. <laughs> Thank you so much. You can hand it to someone in the audience. He's good at spices. He's good at spices. Tell me what that is. No, it's not cool. Well, it's sort of cheap, really. It's called allspice. And a lot of people seem to believe that allspice is a mixture of spices, but it isn't. It's a specific plant that gets its name for smelling like a combination of cinnamon, nutmeg and cloves. It's called pimenta dioica. Oh, Oh, bless you. (laughs) (laughs) Don't get too close to it. (laughs) We know where it's reached in the audience. Oh, still under the back of row three now. <laughs> Excellent. Now, the word pepper has, as it were, two meanings for us. We have the pepper, which is salt and pepper, and then we have 
hot peppers. Mm. And do you remember the name of the scale by which you measure the heat of peppers? <laughs> I heard a little whisper in the If audience. you had a really strong one, it smells like someone's died inside you. <laughs> <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> someone in the audience is dying to get out the... Oh. Richter. <laughs> so you... Scoville, Scoville, they all Scoville, Scoville scale, yeah. you're absolutely right. And on the Scoville scale, a jalapeno, for example, is 5,000. Whereas the hottest one is the Trinidad Maruga Scorpion. <gasps> it yes. sounds hot. Yeah. Which ranks over 2 million on the Scoville scale. Could it kill you if it was that? I mean, could it Almost. I mean, the hottest possible on the Scoville scale are actually genuinely poisonous. But the hottest curry, supposedly, ever measured that's been eaten, it was eaten by a Dr. Rothwell, who was a radiologist, perhaps appropriately. In order to prepare it, the chef had to wear goggles and, and a mask, <laughs> like so. And it produces crying and shaking and vomiting in eating. Um, it's and very this... like our local Indian. <laughs> Uh, the restaurant's owner said that Dr. Rothwell was, was hallucinating, and he himself took a ten-minute walk down the street, weeping in the middle of eating. It took him an hour to eat, which is not bad. So, so hot. Uh, which Olympic sport should women not take part in? Weightlifting. Yeah. <laughs> Funny enough, she looks so pleased with herself. She does. Her. That's what can you be? Well, I see. Get away from a prolapse, then. <laughs> I can't think be. of her name. She's amazing. She can lift the equivalent of two sort of fridges over her head. Oh, yeah. She's an astonishing... It's Cheryl Howarth, by the way. Cheryl Howarth, that's right. Howarth. She's an amazing weightlifter. I went to women's weightlifting in the Olympics. Did you? It's marvellous. Oh. And uh, a woman from Kazakhstan won. Yeah. <laughs> Very much. Not a dry eye in the house. Yeah. You can see the physical effort. Oh, but it's quite funny, the weightlifting, because usually, the, the, I've got to say the trainer, but it's more like handler. <laughs> <laughs> This way, and, <laughs> and then they get the, the powder, you know, for oh yes, they've got the grip, and then they get in position, and then they, and then they go, <laughs> and you all have to be quiet. You can hear a pin drop, and then they make this. And when they can't do it, it's heartbreaking. It's four years. Slam it down. They turn their back on it. <laughs> but if they do do it, everyone erupts. Yeah. So it's very emotional. Yeah, I bet it is. It? There was one girl who fell down and got pinned under it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's craning their necks for a view. <laughs> she alive? <laughs> 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 took about four people to lift the thing off her neck. Oh. You know, it's a game helps. It's enormous. Exactly. But yeah, it was very, very exciting. Okay. Everything about the Olympics was exciting. It was. It was quite it? exciting yeah. just going to the Excel yeah. Centre. No one's ever said that before. <laughs> Are you talking about the ancient Olympics? No, the ancient Olympics was all no, it was male no, anyway. Yeah. No, this is obviously the women are, should be allowed to, and can take part in all Everything. the summer yeah, Olympics. Except, except Pierre de Coubertin, who founded the modern Olympics, he said that it should just be about uh, male athleticism appl applauded by women. But we've moved on from that, as we know. So when we say should, is we're, it a we're, K? Yes, it is it's a K. K thing. <clears throat> and it's a K. The word actually means in its own language a man's something, which is why technically you can't have a woman's version of it. Kayaking is the right oh, answer. Really? Yeah. Absolutely right. In the Inuktitut language, it mm. means a man's boat. Except and, they uh, also had uh, all female boats, and I'm trying to think of the name of them. They had a boat that was only for the women. Kayakette. And, <laughs> <laughs> and traditionally, the women caught more fish in their boats, and they've got a completely different name, like an umyak, I think. It was called a trawler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> they sometimes men used the umyak for, you know, hunting walruses and things, but they were mainly used just for transporting people and objects. Now, these two in this picture, one seems to have a quiver for arrows, and the other one seems to have a baby. Growing out of a shoulder. It would be awful to get those mixed <laughs> That's so true. See, when you say that now, it's all sort of, you know, marvellous equality, yeah. but it's not completely. Um, the, for example, in the, in the women's football in the mm. 2012 Olympics, um, the Japanese sent a women's team and they sent a men's team, and the men's team came from Japan in business class, and the mm. women's team came in economy. But that's not my and, fault. I no, I'm just saying. you say it. But I wasn't... <laughs> Blaming no, you. Good. Uh, they did go back, That's... I have to say, in a different way, in that um, the women went back with a silver medal and the men went back without anything. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> there are a few games. I mean, in the Olympics, for example, there are only two sports which are wholly co ed, as it were. Equestrian, the equestrian, equestrian is one, one, and the other is sailing, oh. where it doesn't seem to make a difference. Almost all sports are invented by men to show off skills that men have. So that's kind of why I think men are good at them. Right? I like the ones where they do those um, trial ones, you know. And uh, I think it was at 1900 or something in Paris, they had poodle clipping as a <laughs> trial sport. It's a nice thought. It's actually not true. It's, Is it it's not a, true? Yeah, it's a myth, but it's a lovely mm. idea. I'd like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now for a question about going under the knife. What's the advantage of having an arm surgically attached to your face? Oh. You could use it like a trunk. Yeah. You could. Eat true. yourself bums. <laughs> You were, uh, Can you not feed yourself buns already? Well, yeah. <laughs> if, you're doing something, if you're doing something else, so let's say you were performing surgery and you got peckish, 
You won't have to get anyone else to help That's you. True. <laughs> Are you talking about an arm or an arm and a hand or just extra the arm? arm? No, it's not to give you an extra arm. Oh, skin grafting. It was, it was kind of skin grafting. It was done in the 17th century by a, an Italian surgeon. That's the process. Oh, There's wow. your arm. It's the okay. bit near the shoulder, and it's attached, as you can see, to the nose. It's quite common in that period for the nose to perish, to disappear, to get diseased from... Oh, syphilis. Syphilis, I'm afraid. Mm. And there was a man called Gaspari Tagliacocci, who was a surgeon from Bologna, and he performed this rhinoplasty, essentially. Can you name a, a famous person who had a, a nose made of metal? Very great. Uh, Tycho Brahe. You probably pronounce him better than most, because yeah. he was, a, he was a Danish, your countryman. Danish astronomer. Tycho Brahe, yes. Yeah, yeah. And he had a, Zinc, was it all brass? Or no, it was, I think it was brass. brass. Yeah. And, oh, um, how fabulous. Yeah. 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 Did, he, did he play it like a trumpet? <laughs> <laughs> all the time. Aww. Well, disconcerting <laughs> as well, though, colour-wise, to have a big brass nose no, so with no. a fine shine on it. I've got an eye on my finger. An eye on your finger? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be quite I'm possible. sure it'd be possible one day. Mm -hmm. yeah. But for the, th the uses on buses and tubes... <laughs> I'm afraid people get... <laughs> no! Not for an autocolonoscopy. <laughs> oh, stop it. <laughs> Behave. That's just revolting. <laughs> uh, of course, the, the other thing is, um, uh, uh, there's a nobleman who decided he didn't want anybody's... <laughs> there was a nobleman who decided he didn't want to have reading. a cut made. <laughs> there's a, a nobleman who decided he didn't want a cut made in his own arm, so he had a servant with his arm cut. Really? And, yeah. And the servants had to, the servant had to follow him all around. But of course, you can imagine, what, what happened was the servant died and the nose was rejected. Of course, right? yeah. And they weren't sure whether it was, he died because it was rejected or it was rejected because so he died. So you've got no nose and nobody to get the tea? Mm. No, exactly. <laughs> now, there's another operation. Here's another Quite operation. Well. A gynecomastia, which is a breast diminution. Mm. In 2012, a paper called Gynecomastia in German Soldiers etiology and pathology. Look at the number of breast reductions that were taking place among male members of the German army. Abnormal breasts. Why would German soldiers have abnormal breasts? They drink too much milk. No. OK, oh. is it when you march like this? It's, it's not quite the marching, up. it's the ceremonial buffeting of your rifle against your chest. It actually causes the breast to enlarge. Is it like a shock thing? I guess it's, it's like a, a shock, shock. And, a, and, a, and a... Yeah, the breast has to get used to this regular pummeling and decides to push oh extra my. fat up to protect itself. Wow. It's, you know, during ceremonial drill. This is but the women could, could save money on breast implants and just get a gun. And... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If you were sitting on the bus just doing that, yeah, I'd save it to drive it. <laughs> yes. Definitely. I think if you took a gun on a bus at all, it'd be well, in trouble. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But in the last six years, 212 German soldiers have had this uh, ah. procedure, Gosh. Uh, which is not inconsiderable considering being a male soldier, it's a bit well, embarrassing. Kind of, yes, exactly. I just thought, you know, wouldn't it go away? Yeah, but the modern German army, you know, forget all your notions of the Nazi army, we're a whole new people, you know? We're very at ease with our inner woman, you know? It's, it's really, there's no embarrassment. I can show you my breasts, you know? And I'm not embarrassed at all. It's fine. Do you not think... Camouflage clothing is weird because I mean you can see them perfectly well. <laughs> <laughs> you may have missed the point, but I, I kind of know what you're saying. <laughs> um, right, let me take you back to a day in September 2005. Why did so many Russians have it off? Uh, is it football? Wasn't anything to do with football. Is it to do with voting? To do with voting? No. Actually, only a province. There was, uh, there was Crack, a governor of this uh, province and a particular Cam town. Ulanovsk is the name of the town. Uh, okay. That might be a hint. Does Ulanovsk mean anything to you? Uh, Someone in the audience will know what the name means. <laughs> Lenin. Lenin. Lenin's real name was Ulan. Oh, no, so I his don't. town was named after him, Ulanovsk. And it was a popular destination in, in communist times. People can say he was born. Like, he was born. There's me just thinking he's <laughs> from Liverpool. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to get into the, You have to sound as if you're speaking, speaking backwards. backwards. That's always the way it's like. Yeah, you're a fusion. Um, <laughs> the governor of. Uh, <laughs> there he is, even. Oh, look at him. Looks like he's praying. Very. Through his foresight, Oh, my God, it is. It is. Wonderful. Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and he decided that the town was suffering. Well, and, it is. Look and at it the needed, architecture. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid most uh, uh, communist architecture is even worse than that. But yeah. he decided it needed to increase its population. So he well, named the day... Was there an edict? Yes. Hmm. And it was basically Donk Me Day, Shad Day. And if you could show that you had conceived on that day, you got prizes. <laughs> it's very beautiful. It's like a fridge. <laughs> like a fridge, yeah, yeah. What else? What else can you have? Um, and there was a, a star prize, which was a four by four. <laughs> but on that day, if you could, what did gay people do? Redecorate? I'm afraid gay people... 
<laughs> yes, they do that every day. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> um, me. Gay people were never the first priority, <laughs> and still aren't too much, I'm afraid. Quite it was the day of conception. Game shows in the 70s, they'd give you a speedboat or a caravan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't want it at all. You'd buy the caravan. <laughs> There'd be someone standing any... in the door waving. <laughs> Did you clear you up like a thing? Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, no, I think, the idea yes. was, I think it was sort of very you know, oh, severe I, Russian. I think it had to be within marriage. Oh. I think they didn't want to they didn't fill Lanovs with bastards. No. It was the last thing they wanted. Riff uh, Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And in the Napoleonic era, there was a Russian general called Alexei Arakchaev who insisted that all the women on his estate have a son every year. And if they had a daughter or didn't have any child or even miscarried, they were fined. <laughs> It was tough, yeah. but they understood it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they knew where they were. Seems perfectly reasonable to me. <laughs> um, anyway, in 2005, the mayor of Ulyanovsk gave everyone a day off so they could play hide the sausage. Uh, <laughs> we, need, we need to talk about Kevin. All oh, right. <clears throat> what can you say about <gasps> Kevin's? One of my best friends is called Kevin. Well, I'm sorry. The, uh, no, <laughs> I say that because that's the close to the answer. I'm sorry oh, for him. Okay. Is it the meaning of the name? Something it's unfortunately it's just not a good name to have if you're on the hunt for a partner on dating websites. Uh, people are actively put off by the name Kevin. I'm afraid oh. they get fewer replies. So if your name's Kevin, use your middle name. If, uh, um, but not if your middle name is Marvin, Justin, or Dennis, because they're equally unfortunate. <laughs> it's so unfair. I mean, I've you never know, met you've, anyone called. You've never Kevin. met a Kevin. I've never met a Kevin. I've, I've never met a Kevin. You've never Literally met a Kevin. Never, never met, met a Kevin. Kevin. There's a Kevin there. You can meet and we a Kevin. believe you. We now believe you. Called Kevin in. Susan. Hiya. Kevin. Hey. He's gorgeous. He's gorgeous. He's lovely as anything. Do you know, before tonight, it's like surprise, surprise. Before tonight, I'd never met a Kevin. Now I'm married to one. Meet your future Kevin. You're so pleased. You're like, at last, my time in the sun. It's Kevin. But also, if you're female, there are four names that do just as badly for women Mandy, Chantal, Jacqueline, and Selena with a C. Apparently, the best names, which are rather dully middle class, are Jacob Alexander for males and Charlotte and Emma for females. Mm. It, just in terms of returns on the website. I'll give you some names last year born yeah. in America for the uh, beginning with K Crimson, K R Y M S O N, Clinton with a K, King Solomon, all one word. Um, He's mine. Keats and Cadrian, that's K D R I A N. Cadrian, come in our Cadrian, tea's on the table. <laughs> Sorry, I said it like that. Uh, that is, um, America, there were ten Kindles, as in the... E reader, well, people are now reader. called Kindle. Kindle. Ten in America, baptised or at least given that name. And ten King Davids, or one word. My sister-in-law used to work in a hospital. I know a pair of twins born, this is in Sunderland, and they were named FIFA and UEFA. <laughs> FIFA and Little UEFA. Champions League, you get in now. FIFA and UEFA. <laughs> That's fantastic. They're not even words. Uh, right. You're less likely to click with people called Kevin, sadly. Now it's time for the klaxon roulette that we call general ignorance. Figures on buzzers, please. Which way is this comet going? Blue. Where's oh, it headed I, to? I think it's going that way. I thought it was the answer, but. That way. Oh! <laughs> 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 It looks as though the tail is to the left. Is it, is it some reverse? It's merely the, yeah. the tail's called by solar wind. There's nothing to reveal the direction of travel. It's a solidified carbon dioxide turning to gas in the solar winds. Um, and it's always pointing away from the sun, the tail. It's it's beautiful. Degree. They are beautiful, aren't they? Mm. Comes Who from the... took that picture? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good effort. <laughs> You're going to put it into a competition. <laughs> yeah. like, I shot this on a Nikon F8, on, on, standing on a stepladder. It took me 40 years to get the film to the uh, yeah, I assume from some passing object that NASA sent up. Um, <laughs> but it comes from the Greek komitos. Do you know what that means? It's rather nice. Electrical store. No. <laughs> He's a long beard. Long beard. Long beard. Yeah. And that's what it reminds people of, the nice long beard. The point is that there's nothing to reveal the direction of travel. We don't know where that one's going, then. We simply don't know. <laughs> um, uh, we, we know there are more than Luton. four... Luton. <laughs> Luton. That'll do. That'll do. Now, describe the skin on a crocodile's head. Oh, hang on, there isn't going to be any, is there? Thick is probably right, yeah. There's a trap, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Would I? Yes. They don't uh... have any skin. They, yeah, they do. No, it's not that. <laughs> it's not that yeah. Just yeah. avoid the word. It's shoe. It's <laughs> reptilian. Yes, that'll do. Yeah, it's not. But it isn't. Scaly. Um, it's not scaly. It's not scaly. You're right. No. That's right. It's not scaly. Not scaly. Right. Uh, scaly things are. Move on then. Next one. Scaly. 
just a, just a quick explanation. Fish, um, fish is It's cracked skin and it's irregular. Scales are genetically programmed to appear and are regular, but this is, these are just different on every single crocodile and they're, they're not regular. Do you know, I, once, um, I did an extraordinary trip where I canoed across Africa. I don't recommend it. You get a condition called trench bottom. And um, <laughs> I met a wonderful woman and she knew I was very sorry, anxious about the trip. Sorry, did, did what, nude? I canoed across Africa. Nude. Yeah. And there's no, no, not nude. I was... <laughs> It wasn't dangerous enough, so I couldn't go without birds on. I said, you and me, how do you see it? I can use That's why I went, my dad. No. Um, anyway, I met this woman, this missionary, and I said to her... <laughs> she said, I hope you're not in a kayak. <laughs> She was a vicious missionary. A missionary. And she said to me, uh, are you worried about the crocodiles? And I said, yes. And she said, if you should meet a crocodile, here's the advice. Offer it your arm, because then you've still got both legs to run away. Mm -hmm. Pass it on. I case, like that. Pass it on. But we know another good way. Put a rubber band over its <laughs> Carry a big rubber band. Yeah. You can only move one jaw, and it says, you can't put any pressure upwards. And then you snap it down. The things that look like scales on a crocodile's head are actually just cracks in its skin. So, that's the end of the show, so let's find out who's the clever clogs and who's a big, stupid old thicky. In um, equal last position, <laughs> on minus nine, it's Lisa and Susan! Yay! In a highly respectable second place, with minus four, Alan Davis! Oh! Which means that our runaway super soarway winner with minus two is Sandy Toxley! Yeah. So it only remains for me to thank Susan, Sandy, Lisa, and Alan. Good night! A compilation of QI's All Things K can be seen this Friday night at 10 here on BBC Two. Alan Ginsberg's poem How leads to an obscenity trial in 1957. James Franco stars with Mad Men's John Hamm next. And over on BBC Three now, Bank to Bank Family Guy.